There's an image you did not know that you would get today. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 127th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 15th episode of Season 3, titled The Potion Notion. We begin this episode at school where Bulk and Skull bug Tommy and Kimberly, asking them when was the last time Tommy took Kimberly out on a romantic evening. Apparently, Bulk and Skull have to sell tickets for the junior police ball, and Tommy asks Kimberly who gladly accepts. So, are they dating, or...? On the moon, Rita yells at Zed because he never takes her anywhere. Zed says that Serpentera is up and running and fully charged, so that they can go away on a second honeymoon. Zed tells Goldar to make sure that Fincer finishes the monster that he's been working on. We then see Fincer and Rito talking about the monster, and Fincer accidentally lets it slip that Rita used a love potion on Lord Zed. Awkward. Fincer leaves and Rita uses the love potion on the monster, waking her up. Her name is Miss Chief, and Rito has a plan. At school, Miss Chief is in the hallway at school, but don't worry, she just says right away that she loves being invisible. Wow, we couldn't have shut the monster on a green screen and made it translucent at least or something? Okay then. Kim is telling Tommy how much she's looking forward to the ball when she is hit by Miss Chief's love potion. She immediately sees Skull, and she falls for him right away, walking over, and then she just starts flirting with him. Tommy gets jealous, trying to get in between them, but Skull pushes him away. I have to admit, this is nice because Skull has literally been into Kim since the first episode, maybe? In Miss Appleby's class, Lieutenant Stone shows up, asking her if she's seen Bulk or Skull when he's also hit by the love potion. He starts hitting on Miss Appleby, who is clearly embarrassed, but like, kinda into it. Then the monster is out in the hallway again, and while Bulk is making fun of Skull, he gets hit. And then he sees Aisha falling in love. Aisha says, guys, we should go, something's definitely going on. On the moon, Goldar makes it very clear that he loves Zed, and Rita should leave him and his husband alone. Just a reminder, no one has hit Goldar with the potion. He's just really into Zed. Very progressive, Power Rangers. At the park, Tommy and Kim come up, being with the others, and they talk about how things have been really weird. And Kim is acting like a lovesick puppy. Billy suggests talking to Zordon, and just as they're about to leave, Goldar shows up with the Tangas, and Kim says, I have to protect Skull, which is kind of funny because Skull is not there at all. Ninja Ranger power now! There's a really cool fight with the six fighting off their assailants, and of course, Goldar gets hit onto the ground right away. In Serpentera, Zed and Rita are celebrating their second honeymoon together, and Zed says that Serpentera is running low on energy. Rita says that she hasn't heard that line in 3,000 years, insinuating that Zed is lying so they can basically park and bone inside Serpentera. Zed is pissed, and he calls the moon, talking to Rito. He asks Rito to put Golar on the line, and he yells at Rito for not recharging Serpentera when he told him to. He also says that they're on their way back, and Goldar should make sure that the monster is ready by the time that they get back. Meanwhile, Goldar bails from the fight with the rangers. At the command center, Tommy explains to Zordon how Kimberly doesn't think that he's the hottest thing to ever walk the earth anymore, so she has like got to be under a spell here. Alpha scans her and then she just says, Kimberly Ann Skolovich, to see what her new last name would sound like. Then she tries Kimberly Hart Skolovich because she's a progressive woman. Alpha freaks out that Kim is under the spell of a love potion when the alarms go off, and Zordon shows them mischief. During this, Kim decides that this is the best time to whisper something random into Aisha's ear. I mean, she's in love, not socially unaware, right? Tommy begs Zordon to turn Kim back into normal, but all of a sudden, Zordon has a complex about tampering with human emotions, despite him literally recruiting teenagers to be soldiers in a war that they had nothing to do with. Zordon says, um, I mean, maybe it'll like wear off over time, and then they just leave. On the moon, Goldar finds Rito, who is terrified they'll get in trouble for sending down the monster without the other's permission. Rito then mentions that he just kind of found out about a love potion that was involved with Zed and Rita, and Goldar has this aha moment, realizing that Rita tricked Zed into marrying her. He then screams for Fincer, demanding an antidote for the love potion immediately. At school, Principal Kaplan, hey, how are you doing? is hit by Miss Chief, falling in love with Miss Appleby. Good day to be her, I guess. Fincer has already finished the antidote, and Goldar sends him down to test it on the humans before they use it on Zed. Fincer shows up and he tells Miss Chief to go away, and he's apparently invisible too. He uses the antidote on Principal Kaplan and Stone, turning them back into normal people. Then he uses it on Bulk and Aisha, and Aisha is like, uh, bye, walking away. Then finally, 
Finster uses it on Kimberly, and she freaks out, realizing that she's been flirting with Skull. She runs over to Tommy, and Tommy says it's a long story. I mean, not really. On the moon, Goldar, Rito, Mischief, and Finster are hanging out, talking about how everything is back to normal. Then Rita and Zed walk in, and Mischief, for some reason, sprays Rita, making her fall in love with Goldar. This is hands down the best episode of Power Rangers ever. Now Rita is chasing Goldar around, playing with his hair. Then Finster hits her with the antidote, and Rita freaks out, walking away. Zed walks in, confused as to what the hell is going on here, and he just says, let's just send down the monster already, and Mischief disappears. At school, the Rangers get beat from Zordon, and they find out that Mischief is in the park. It's morphin' time. The Rangers run in, fighting Mischief, who now has a giant gear shield. By the way, no one has even mentioned that Mischief is a fire hydrant monster this entire episode. Whatever, she keeps tossing her shield at them, but Tommy hits it away before Zed and Rita just make her grow giant. They call out their ninja zords, forming the ninja megazord. They briefly fight Mischief, who hits them once with her shield before they complain that Tommy is needed. He combines with them, forming the ninja falcon megazord, and they kill the monster. Whatever, kind of lackluster there. Goldar demands Fincer uses the antidote on Zed, and he does, and while it works, we find out something absolutely amazing. Zed is actually just really in love with Rita. Wow. At the junior police ball, everyone talks about how that monster was a hothead. Don't try to force it in now, guys. Meanwhile, Miss Appleby is dancing with Stone while Tommy and Kimberly are dancing too. Kim apologizes for how she treated Tommy, and then she sees Skull, who was clearly crushed. She goes over and she apologizes to him, asking him to dance, and he asks if she wants to step on his feet as well as his heart. She then says that it's better for them to just be friends, and Skull is surprised to hear her call them friends. They make up, dancing. The end. Over the credits, we see an extended scene of Bulk first falling in love with Aisha. That's all. This episode touched on so many things that I didn't even have to. First of all, I remember that Rita drugged Zed into marrying her, which was 25 episodes ago or so. Also, it touches on Skull's crush on Kimberly a bit, resolving that. It also gave us Principal Kaplan, who hasn't been seen in what feels like forever. We found out that Zed's love potion wore off a long time ago, and he's really just been in love with Rita this entire time. I mean, that's amazing. Seriously. Honestly, there's like nothing I change about this episode except maybe tie the whole fire theme from the monster into the rest of the episode more, but that's such a minor thing, it's hardly something I'd be offended over. So, will next episode continue to be just as good? Because I have to be honest, I'm loving season 3 right now. But until then, may the power protect you.